We now have our 10th name typhoon of the season here. This is Vomco, locally known as Ulysses, moving into southeastern Luzon. Actually, this video out of Catan Duanas. Thank you very much for sending this in. Uh, just some incredible imagery there. And this same location is still recovering from Typhoon Coney. I'm meteorologist Robert Spetta. Let's talk about this storm system here as it moves across southeastern Luzon. And it does look like it is going to be making landfall here towards the east of Manila as we will head through Wednesday afternoon through the evening. I'm going to break all this down for you. This is microwave imagery here, by the way. Key thing you want to take away from it, this does not have a tight inner core of winds. The eye wall is very spread out. The winds are very spread out from that center of circulation. And what that tells me, where you're going to be looking at tropical storm strength conditions. We already are seeing that from northeastern areas of Luzon down through Aurora, Quezon, and even extending down here through Bicol. Bicol, some people have already sent me images here as well. Uh, you've been seeing some significant flooding and damaging winds already out there. So this storm is no joke. It may not be as powerful as Goni, but it still is packing winds about 140 gusting to 185 kilometers per hour. Pressure now at 900 and 70 hectopascals moving off here towards the west at about 20 kilometers per hour let's take a look at the high res visible satellite imagery and this is what i'm talking about you don't have that tight inner core eye with this system so the eye wall is a bit spread out here and that's what it means by we're seeing these typhoon strength winds well away from the center of circulation basically all of b call uh down through Catan Duanas uh and uh, uh polilo uh you're going to be looking at uh, really this storm moving directly directly overhead as it heads off there uh, towards the west. All right, anyways, please subscribe to this channel. Follow me on all these social media platforms if you can. Let's break this forecast down. So here's a look at the latest from Pagasa. They do expect that landfall here. So we go ahead through your Wednesday afternoon into the evening with the latest track actually pushing it just north of Manila across the NCR. Yeah, that is taking Manila out of the right front quadrant here, but there is still some downsides to that as well. I'll talk about that in a second. Manila and all the NCR, uh, Quezon City, down through Cavite, Cavite City, um, you're all under Signal Force 3 at this time. That is what Pagasa expected to upgrade it to. I think this is gonna be the max of it. I am pretty happy with the fact that Pagasa is ahead of the curb with this one. They issued that signal force three uh, uh, well ahead of time. So hopefully people are actually taking this seriously uh, before this comes overhead. Here's a look at the track from the Japan Meteorological Agency, by the way. Captain Duanas, they're getting raked with this storm system. So like I said, despite the center line being right here, doesn't mean you're not going to see those high winds further towards the south. This does have a large wind field moving over the islands here, coming on shore. I kind of zoomed in on this, though, because we're always talking about these mountains, the Sierra Madre Mountains. Yes, they're there. Yes, they are going to weaken this storm, but it's not going to be enough to just make it a light, stiff breeze on the lee side of those hills there. In fact, these mountains are going to be causing issues as far as rain totals are concerned i do expect some areas here could see upwards about four five hundred millimeters of total precipitation not to mention the right front quadrant here some of these bays and inlets that water gets thrusted up in there you could be seeing some pretty decent storm surge there as well so there's a lot of factors here going into play the good news uh, and this is just uh, the geography of the region, there's a reason why the east side of these mountains are not as heavily populated as the west side because they just get raked with typhoons every year, one after another. This year, more so than normal, at least for the last few months. But uh, yeah, all right. So here's a look at ASCA imagery, your satellite imagery. Uh, key thing I want to show you here is look at the wind field. You have tropical storm strength winds all the way off here towards the north across northeastern Luzon. In fact, this is a pretty large storm system, 1,200 kilometers across from tip to tip. Uh, to put that in perspective, uh, 1,200 kilometers, about the same distance from London to Rome. Uh, I just like to put a little geography here for you. So if you're watching this, maybe you're not from the Philippines and you're thinking, oh yeah, how that doesn't look that big. Uh, it is. It's a very large storm system, very large wind field. So if you're away from the center of circulation, just keep in mind, you're probably still going to see tropical storm strength winds. All right, so Pulido, 
right in the eye as we go ahead into um, your Wednesday evening here. Right front quadrant all the way off towards Cassiguron. I'm afraid of that wind kind of getting thrusted up into that area. And we still have that coastal surge. Anybody here along the immediate coastline? Uh, there is going to be a storm surge here, three to four meters possibly high. Just that persistent onshore flow wrapping it around this. This is picking up on that rainfall also hitting the mountains here. So it is going to disrupt our storm a little bit. But as we go ahead into your Wednesday night, it moves on short. We start to see those winds wrap around. So yeah, you, you have the bulk of the precipitation getting there. Then on the lee side, you don't have as much, but there is still some showers, and we still have that eye. And then this is going to start to pick up moisture out of the South China Sea. And this is what I'm talking about heading into Thursday morning. Here's Manila Bay right there. You got Manila, Cavite City. Uh, this is all going to basically wrap around. And if the track holds true in the HWRF, which I hope this doesn't happen, this could funnel those winds right up the bay coastal areas could see a bit of a storm surge as well that would be problematic now the 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 hope is those mountains do good enough number that it weakens those onshore winds and their system doesn't have as deep of a low pressure problem is uh, I, i'm not sure about that i think that given the size of the wind field here uh even though it is going to be disrupted it's still the overall the machine is going to continue to work uh, as it moves towards the west. So I think those onshore winds heading into Thursday morning. Um, Thursday morning, when the storm's just north of Manila, I think that's when you're really going to start to see some of the worst of the weather. This is by Thursday noontime. Wind's still screaming up Manila Bay there off towards the east. Eventually, a storm is going to work off there into the afternoon through the evening. Uh, and then we'll start to see those rapidly improving conditions. So I keep on stressing Manila because last time during Coney, it um, was not severely impacted. I'm just afraid people are going to let their guard down. This one's moving just a little bit further towards the north. If those winds come on short Manila Bay, it is going to change things up pretty significantly. Are looking at that chance of a storm surge along the east coast as well and potential for some coastal flooding in Manila Bay. All right, know your signal force warnings. Maybe you're new to the Philippines. You're like, what is this stuff? Why can't they just issue a typhoon, typhoon warning for goodness sakes? Well, this is what Pegasus does. This is what people know here. Signal Force 3 indicates 120 to 170 kilometer per hour winds within the next 18 hours. Those are already in place here across the Philippines. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, though, please post down in your comment box below. Always appreciate that. Please subscribe to this channel. Um, and if you want to follow me on Twitter, Facebook, anything like that, uh, I also post some information on these storms if you're not getting enough updates. But I think the key thing is check in with Pegasa and check in with your local authorities. I've seen, um, especially in these areas that were hit by Coney pretty hard, uh, there are a lot of people already there helping out with the recovery. Uh, some people have sent me some images of that as well. I really appreciate that. Uh, and they're already there. They're already in place. So if there's any good news that people are already helping out, Unfortunately, people need the help from Coney, but people are already there helping out too. So hopefully the recovery will be expedited following this storm. Stay safe though. Thanks for watching.